So it's a knitting, binding together, or joining together of the soul of a man to another person's soul. And you may ask, but what is the soul? Now the soul consists of our mind, our will, and our emotions. So that means our mind, will, and emotions could be tied up to another person's mind, will, and emotions. So that is what we talk about a soul tie. For the two souls shall be one flesh or one body. So I want you to picture Apostle uh, Terrence and I were married and what happened is under that marriage covenant the both of our souls will be bound unto one. So we're going to talk about godly soul ties and ungodly soul ties. So when the two souls shall be one flesh or body, whether it's a joining of a godly soul tie, godly soul tie is based on genuine love. That's a godly soul tie. A demonic soul tie is based upon lust, perversion, or evil. Demonic soul tie. Go, comes to form together through lust, perversion, or evil. Godly soul ties is on general love. I'm going to constantly repeat it because this is a teaching. This is a teaching. Because what teaching does, it equips us. It's a, different, it's a difference in teaching and preaching. So we want, we want to make sure we are taught and equipped today. There are different types of soul ties. Godly soul ties are godly connections or friendships. You can have a godly soul tie with a friend. Friendships, soul ties between a husband and wife. It could be a soul tie with a family member. It could be a soul tie between your pastor, your spiritual mentor. These type of soul ties are God-ordained and appointed. They're God-ordained and appointed. They are good and healthy soul ties. They are formed and built on the foundation of love. Now, I'm going to give you scripture for this. An example of a godly soul ties between friends is found in 1 Samuel 18 and 1. If we can put that scripture up. 1 Samuel 18 and 1. First Samuel 18 and 1 reads, this is godly soul ties. Thank you, Lord. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knitted with the soul of David. And David loved him as his own soul. Let's read that again. And it came to pass, godly soul ties, Jeremiah, when he had made it in a speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own. Now, this is a godly soul tie. This is a godly soul tie. Shanika, could you check that for me? Is that working? Okay. Godly soul tie. Now, let's look at soul in this scripture. When he had made it in a speaking unto Saul, that the soul of this person was knit with the soul of another person. So stand up Ashley and Jeremiah. Turn around to the people. Now this is an example. Ashley and 
then Jeremiah has a special relationship as brothers and sisters, and they are very, very close. They are very, very close. So, in this particular example, we're going to, we're going to take this scripture, that the soul of Jeremiah is knit with the soul of Ashley, And Jeremiah loved Ashley as his own soul. This is a godly soul tie. In this scripture, soul means, we're going to break it, break it down a little bit farther. It does mean the mind, the will, and emotions. It's also your soul consists of the inner being of the man. The inner being of the man or the man himself. The inner being of the man. Or the man himself. The soul tie also represents yourself, the person, the individual. It consists of your seat of emotions and passions, your mind. Or the activity of your mind, the activity of your character, or the activity of your will. So this is a soul tie that God put together. Now when the scripture says that Jonathan was knitted with the soul of David, the word knitted means that their soul was tied together. So if you take a piece of rope, and it's almost as if you can tie Ashley and Jeremiah together, sure. or tie their mind together. So you notice when a person is tied together, even if we take it into a relationship, you will begin to notice that. You will begin to think like your husband. You will begin to um, think like or even act like the person that you tied to. That's why it's so important to be careful who you tie yourself with. It's very, it's very important. So even if you have a close friend and that person don't have the relationship with the Lord, you will find out that that person weighs those conversation, you would end up sounding and acting like that person. Because the souls began to tie. Because there's ungodly and there are godly. You all can be seated. So to be knitted together means that we are tied together. We are bound to bind together. To join together. So one of my closest friends is Evangelist Fair. So regardless of what someone, for an example, what someone says or have said about her because my soul is tied to her, I know her heart. I know her. And that's the type of relationship that we all need to have in the body of Christ. You should be easily to go on another person's side when you know the person. So we have to make sure we are tied to the right things and it is based, and is it based on love. Let's go to Genesis 2 and 24, another godly soul tie. Genesis 2 and 24. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. A man shall leave his father and his mother, and he shall cleave. Cleave in this 
scripture means that. When my husband and I got married, and when we get married, we get married under the holy covenant, which is a holy matrimony covenant between us and God. The scripture says that he must leave his father and his mother. That doesn't mean that he disowned them, he don't have a relationship with them. That doesn't mean that in that way. But he said, leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Now let's look at this word cleave in the Hebrew, what it means. When it says that that man shall cleave to his wife, that apostle Terence shall cleave to me. This means that he shall stick with me. He shall stay close to me. He shall keep close to me. He shall be joined together to me. And this one I really like. He shall be glued to his wife. Amen. So when God looked at us, he said, they shall, he shall be glued unto his wife, that they shall be one flesh or one body. So when heaven looks down, what he see on that day, when we give our vows unto one another and unto the Lord that he will be in the midst, he says, they, he said, what I want to see, they are glued as one body. So when he looks back, Apostle Terrence, Prophetess Rashida, glued as one body. One body. That means one accord. On one accord. That's why the Bible tells us do not marry unequally yoked. He says one accord. There needs to be a oneness of mind. Oneness to do the will of the Father. There needs to be oneness. One accord. So... This is what the Lord do. Then there are ungodly or demonic soul ties. Now let's get into demonic and ungodly soul ties. I want you to first remember that Satan cannot be, go beyond his limit rights when you are a born again believer. He cannot go beyond his limit rights. He must work within the framework of what he is allowed. Don't give the devil a legal right to enter into your house. When he gets the opportunity, he will try to pervert everything. If you give him the opportunity, he will try to pervert it. Now, let's talk about ungodly soul ties. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 15. 1 Corinthians 6 and 15. Ungodly soul ties or demonic soul ties. And it reads, Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ. Shall I take the members of Christ and make the members of a harlot? This is what Apostle Pratchett was talking about last Sunday. When he's talking about the harlot spirit. Know ye not that your bodies are members of the body of Christ. So when I became part of the family of God, the word of God tells me that my body does not belong to me anymore. My body was purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. So I do not have ownership of my body anymore. But it belongs to the bridegroom. That's why the scripture also says in Revelation that Jesus is going to marry a bride. He's going to marry a woman without a spot or a wrinkle. This is a bride that have kept her body 
sacred, holy before the Lord in heaven. Because I'm going to tell you this, the Father in heaven is not going to allow his son to join or marry a harlot. This is the revelation. He is not going to allow his son to marry a harlot. Then we're going to find out what a harlot is. He said, your body don't belong to you. He said, shall I take the members of Christ? Shall I take the body parts of Christ? And make the members of a harlot. Okay, what, it does, what does it mean, the members of Christ? Members means a member is like a part of your body. A part of your body. A limb of your body. A body part. In the Hebrew, it means, in the Greek, it means a member of a human body, a body is given up to, guess what this? Criminal intercourse. Criminal intercourse. So, I'm explaining. Because they are as it was were belonging to the heartless body. So in other words, should I take the limbs, or I'm going to say this, the private area of your body, of the human body, and give it up to criminal intercourse. I'll explain that. When you became a child of God, you no longer belong to yourself. Your body is no longer your body. Your body is the body of Jesus Christ. So when, when, when the Father in heaven looks down upon your body, and when you go and have sex outside of marriage, God is looking at the scripture that you are giving your body, which belongs to Jesus Christ, who you supposed to be married to, you supposed to be one body with, and you go and give your body to somebody that that is outside of the marriage bed. The scripture says that you are given up to criminal intercourse. That meaning you are breaking God's laws. You are violating the laws of God because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So a harlot is a woman or a man who sells her body for sexual uses. They can sell their body for sexual uses. A harlot can also be a prostitute. A harlot can be someone who yields herself to defilement for the sake of gain, whether it is for lust or whether it's for gain. Gain means for money. So just because we're not getting money when we have sex, still God says, but the gain for another person can be lust. Also, any woman or man indulging in unlawful sexual intercourse. So the Father in heaven is looking down and he is saying that when people do this outside of marriage, it is unlawful to him. And it's criminal intercourse. Unlawful intercourse and criminal intercourse. That's why it says in the word of God that fornicators, adulterers, homosexuality, all of them will not make it into the kingdom of God. Why? Because they're breaking God's law. There's laws in the kingdom that we have to abide by. So if we do that, we are breaking 
the laws of God. Uh, man of God um, is um, Terrence, you know we still coming? I don't know. Okay. We are breaking the laws of God. And all of us have been guilty. Well, I can say for me. I had a child at 16. So I was a foreigner cater. I had a child at 16. So my soul was tied up to another soul who was not my husband. And I'm going to tell you, through my experience, what happened because of that tie. And what God had to do when my husband and I got married, we got married, and the same year we got married, we ended up both getting saved. But even in our marriage, this is spiritual side of soul ties, there was still a struggle. There was a struggle with intimacy with the one that I knew God called me to be one with. Because I could lay in the bed and it'll feel like physically it was just me and him. But it felt like more than us in the bed. Do y'all hear me? Because there was there was some stones that we didn't set as ties with. We didn't set as ties with. See, this is what happened in a lot of marriages. A lot of marriages, people get married, and 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 and, and believe me, in your marriage, God honored it. God has always sex was always ordained for a marriage covenant. But when we open up the door and we allow our marriage and we allow having sex outside of marriage and then get marriage and we don't have the revelation what the struggle is, that's why a lot of marriages in trouble today. That's why we got a lot of people today. They live with their spouses, but they got a girlfriend. They live with their husbands, but they got a boyfriend. Because there is something that's tying them back to their past. There's something that's tying them back to go back through those doors that they have not properly closed. And if they have if, if they're not doing it, like naturally going out on their spouse, it's a struggle in the bedroom. It's a struggle. And then they tell you how to be such a struggle where you know God has sent you this man of God. And you still won't open up yourself completely to him. You won't open up 100%. You won't let him love, love you like the Bible says. Love, God, the, God told the man, love that wife as Christ loved the church. And that man is trying to love that woman, but he getting the pushback. He constantly getting the pushback, and there's constantly fights, and there's constantly all these arguments because they have not took their prayer, their marriage in prayer to see what is the issue. So, in in other words, they're going outside of their marriage to think they're gonna fix it. And they're going to get tired of even the worms. Because that's not going to fix it. So this is what happens. There are a lot. One of the things that Apostle T and I are going to do when we do marriage counseling with people. We're taking them through deliverance. We're taking them through deliverance. Because if you already been fornicating years before and you, it's going to be a struggle. And we're going to do teaching in the marriage counseling, and they're going to have private deliverance. We're going to take them through deliverance. Because we want your marriage to make it. We don't want your marriage. You married seven months, and then it falls apart. Uh, you, you said a vow unto God, and all of a sudden now you want to get out of it. Because you never brought the issue to God. You went outside and tried to find a solution to what something is very spiritual. So this is what we had to do. I'm telling you what we had to do. So we had to take our marriage to Abba Father. And we began to pray one for another that those demons come up 
out of us so we could be free and enjoy a fruitful marriage and that our children will see a fruitful marriage. So this is what happened. So God says when people do that, you are taking the private area of your body and you giving it up to criminal intercourse. God called us criminals. That's criminal intercourse. You're breaking my law, daughter. Your body didn't belong to your baby dad. We're going we're gonna to paint the picture. Your body, I never joined y'all together. But that something you did on your own. If you don't get that thing dealt with, it will destroy what I did bring together. Do y'all hear me? It will destroy. It will destroy who I brought together. You and Apostle T. Because you, but what happens, you got the door wide open and you just let in the end. You never shut the door. We're going to learn how to shut the door. So you are taking the body of Christ and indulging in sexual sin outside the marriage bed. It's a defilement. It's a defilement. Also, we have to learn with spiritual soul ties that are ungodly and demonic. Spirits transfer. Spirits transfer. People in a man and soul began to become conformed to the oneness of the other soul. I remember observing a uh, um, nice looking couple um, dating together and um, end up just observing them. And I began to watch them, even in how I could tell when this person started dating this person back again. They dress attire change, change into the form of the other person. Certain things they would say sounded just like the person. And then another thing, even when they would get into arguments, it would go so chaotic like the other person. Just conform. And this was out of this person's character. This person didn't do this. So I just sit the person down and say, hey, hey, I need to observe this. Do you understand? Why you are dealing like this? Because you have tied your soul to this person. And this person, this spirit, not person, this spirit is on assignment for you to be bound with to head toward destruction. You're going to do something that you're going to regret. You need to break ties with this person. But it changed them. It conformed them. Because spirits transfer when you lay with a person. That's why God always ordained sex for marriage. That's why. Because he already know you're going to be one with that person. We're going to keep reading this scripture. You're going to see in scripture. If you lay with the hearted, you become one with the hearted. You become one. That's the word. Now, I ain't one with no hearted. Yes, you are. So we have to come to agreement with God's word that all the people before we said I do, we became one with. Our bodies are rightfully purchased by the blood of Yeshua. 1 Corinthians 6 and 16 It says what? Know ye not that he that is joined to a harlot is one body. For two shall he shall be one flesh. Hey, Sister Bill, I knew that was you you came in. Right. What know ye not that he which is joined, joined me, y'all ain't gonna like this definition in the Greek. In the Greek, joined not only mean glued, fasting firmly together, but this word here, he said, cement. 
if I could feel it. That's strong. Know ye that that is joy I feel it to a harlot. You, this is God. You are one body with that heart. Feed me to that heart. So you like, and you wondering why? That's why. Too, when I used to see women, they are far. The man gone on. They are gone on about seven other relationships. They just gone, gone, gone. And she still stuck in a cement. She still stuck. She still stuck. She still stuck. And if any time she let him back in. My Lord. Amen. <laughs> him had seven other relationships. Right. Or she. Either way. Knock on that door. He come back in. Because the cement there. He got broke. See, this thing deep. This thing deep. And people be playing with their soul. The scripture says, what does it profit a man? You gain the whole world, but you let you will lose your soul. You will lose your soul because you're bargaining with your soul sleeping outside of marriage. That's why God said, don't do it. Stay a virgin. The wife said, don't do it. It's a semen. It's a trap. There's a harlot waiting. And like we said, a harlot is not just somebody that sells their body for money. A harlot yields herself or himself, because it can be a male spirit too, to defilement for the sake of gain. Whether the person want pleasure or whether the person just won't gain money. Whether they want to fulfill lust or whether they won't gain. God said this is unlawful sexual intercourse. So think about a woman of God. She's getting weak. She meet, she meet Bubblegum, Mr. Bubblegum. Now make up these names. Meet them for bubblegum. That you know, and, and bubblegum, he, he and he liked bubblegum because if you get a bite of bubblegum, you're gonna be glued to him. Y'all know how they gonna stick to you. You're gonna be glued to him. He she getting weak. She a woman of God. But when she lay down with that bubblegum. We, we got to paint it the way the world say it. That bubble gum. You got to picture. Wait a minute. This bubble gum. And this bubble gum that I'm laying, that I am thinking about laying with, I'm about to commit a crime against my body. Because my body belongs to Jesus Christ. I'm the wife of Jesus Christ. We already said earlier, the father is not going to allow his son to marry a harlot. Y'all, this is so deep. This is so deep. He's not going to allow it. He says she or he is a harlot. They can't, I cannot, they cannot I don't agree with that covenant. So we got to make sure. Think about that. Don't fall. I'm not going to commit unlawful sexual intercourse. Heavenly Father, give me strength. Heavenly Father, help me, oh God. Now I'm going to read a little bit, just a little paragraph that come out of this book on soul ties. This particular book on soul ties is very thin, but it's also talk about 
soul ties to the dead. People have soul ties to the dead. People um, that were family members to them, they was real close to Some of them still talk to them. Some of them still do certain things. But people have soul ties to the dead also that you need to break covenant with. I know y'all, it look like some faces. Please read that part. I might. Please read that part. But through sexual relations outside of marriage, soul ties are formed, and these are mostly through love. Those who engage in sex outside of marriage, you become one flesh, which God purposely, solely, for a husband and wife. Through the doors of adultery, an evil soul tie is created in lust, and this demonic soul tie assignment is to destroy the holy union in a marriage. So if that man or that woman go outside of the marriage bed, that spirit of soul tie is on an assignment. I want to destroy that holy union. I want to destroy it because I hate it. I don't like their oneness. That is based upon, because marriage is supposed to be based upon love and trust. Right. You should never marry based on money Amen. because the person has money. Yeah. You should never marry uh, based on because this, I got kids with him. Right. That don't mean that that's who God wants you to marry just because you have children by him. In some cases, that be the case. But that's not everybody's uh, testimony. So make sure you are married based on love and trust. When love and trust are bet betrayed through adultery, it is very difficult, although not impossible, to restore the shadow bonds of marital oneness. So there has to be a work. The both of those people, if one person went outside the marriage, and they want to try. But there's going to take some work to restore back that oneness and that love and that trust. Perverted soul ties are formed through people of the same sex as well. Homosexuality, lesbianism, this is motivated. They'll tell you it's love, but it's lust. That is motivated through lust. And that scripture is in Romans 1.26. Through 27. We're not going to go to it, but you can have that for your records. First Corinthians 6 and 17 says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So when we are joined, or, or, or when we are glued together to the Lord, we are one spirit with the Lord. So this is who we should be married to to the Lord. The enemy doesn't like this and he doesn't like Genesis 2 and 24 to see husband and wives glued as one. Remember the enemy hates your oneness. If you have a godly soul tied with a best friend, Kiana, he's going to fight that oneness. He hated it. Especially if God connected you with a person for a godly soul tie in friendship. He is, he's going to lie. He's going, but you got to know, y'all have to know each other enough to keep the devil out. You can't give the devil no room to play. No room to play. Because he will try to destroy. He hate one accord. He hate one accord. A ministry that really pray together, love each other, he will try to come in and divide. That's why the word says the body house cannot stand. He works strongly to bring the vision. Because he does not want it to stand in oneness. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you. Which you have of God. And here we go again. You're not your own. Say, I don't belong to myself. So we're, we're, we don't need to belong to ourselves. We gave our lives to Jesus. We, when we surrender our will over to 
to do the will of the Father. We surrender our minds so we can have the mind of Christ. We're letting the Holy Spirit do a work in us. Our bodies does not belong to ourselves, so we cannot lay outside of marriage to defile what belongs to the Lord. This is breaking the law against our own body. Why? Because your body belongs to Jesus. You violate his body, you violate his law. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 6 and 20 says, for you, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit, which are God's. So because I belong to Jesus Christ, Jeremiah, your body belongs to Jesus Christ. You want to confess Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. You got to keep your body holy. You've got to keep your body untouchable from the pretty girls. You've got to keep your body in a place that is honorable before God, my Malaysia. And the scripture says, for, for ye was bought with a price. I want us to think about the cross. Think about the beatings that Jesus took for us. Think about 39 lashes so we could be holy. Y'all think we got holy because of us? No. No. Think about the whoopings that he did upon the cross so his blood can make us holy. His blood make us holy. And he said, you was bought with a price. So I had to think about the beating Jesus did for me that I don't go outside when times get hard. Because there's going to be rough times and good times in every marriage. Amen. Every marriage is going to come with trial. Because you know what God, what, what happens to a marriage? Your love be tested. Your love be tested. Do you me just because of this or just because of that or is it genuine? You gonna be here regardless. Your love don't be tested. It's not gonna be always butterflies and what we see in the fairy tales on TV. You gonna be in the prayer line sometimes and you got to call the pastor we need some counseling. And there not nobody Your time coming. You better be careful. You better be back in the closet praying for them. Because your time is coming. You did what? You better be careful. Because your time coming. So we got to be careful. Don't do that. And please don't put a pot of tea in our own pedestal. Because we going to run a counseling when needed. We're going to get in prayer line when needed, even as leaders. The devil in hell is alive. Y'all got to stay humble and teachable before God. My son, I'm going to miss the whole message. So, for ye are both with that price. Yes, yes. Glorify God in your body, Amen. in your spirit, which are God. Look at this. God said, I want you to glorify me in what? Your body? So, God can get glory even in the way you honor him with your body. He don't get glory when we have sex outside of marriage. There's no glory in that. Who get the glory? The devil. Ha ha ha. You thought you had a deal. You thought he was going to do it. Be right with you. But still what? Repentance 
is a baby. See, what he don't know, we can repent and get right. He don't get that opportunity. He wants to put you in condemnation. Condemnation is jail. It is his jail. That's what he want to do. But you got to know you can get out of the jail of condemnation through true repentance. Then he said, glorify God in your spirit, which is God. So, when the scripture says we are to worship God in spirit and in truth, when I worship God in spirit, he gets glory. Worship him. Every time I worship him, he gets glory. Even in with how we minister and deliver his word, we're supposed to do that also in the spirit. He wants glory out of that. It, are you doing it to draw a following to your name or to his name? God wants the glory out of everything we do. So even when you worship, you glorify God in your spirit. Um, the other scripture is talking about, which I love, I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in good health, even as you prosper, soul. your soul needs to be prospering. Your soul needs to prosper. That means my mind needs to prosper. My emotions need to prosper. My will need to prosper. God wants me to prosper in all things. He wants even my soul to prosper. If how how's a person gonna get focused and prosper in this area and they soul is shaky? They soul needs a healing. They souls need a healing. Now, I'm just going to review really quick before we get into questions. We're talking about soul ties. We're talking about godly soul ties and ungodly soul ties. Godly soul ties are God-ordained, God and they are healthy soul ties. You can have a healthy soul tie with your mom and dad. That's healthy. Long as the soul tie is not controlled. Manipulate. You can have a godly soul tie between a best friend. Long as the soul tie don't get into control and manipulation. Like I had a one, a, a one particular person years ago and I noticed I had to cut tie with this person. This person was coming beyond my space because you need limitations in the friendship and you know she had a habit of the pop-ups pop-up 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 i said hey you got to stop the pop-ups you pop up too much you got to respect that i have a husband and i have six children that was my kids was really smart i'm a busy Mom, I don't have that type of time. Do the pop-ups, pop-ups. And um, I remember one particular time, this person came over. She was a much older lady as, as well. Not, not as that is anything wrong with that because I normally draw older people. Um, but she came, she came over and it was one time she came to the door and I had just told her the limitations. Don't come, dot me. So she pops up again and I happened to be in, in prayer. I was in the closet. And um, one of the kids say, Mom, such and such is at the door. At the door? I said, tell such and such. I will talk to them later. I'm spending time in prayer with God. Okay, try to cut the tie in the natural. But I need to get some back up in the spirit because this spirit wasn't budging. 
I remember one last episode, and I really had to go in in prayer. The same person contacted me and said, I, you promise, I know we're not, you say, oh, because at this point, it had gotten so bad, I had to cut tie, period. Because it was coming to a lot of control. It wasn't a friendship anymore, it was control. It had to come to a point, she said, well, you did promise me that um, you're going to give me something. And I said, yeah, I did make that promise. So my husband and I took what we said that I promised to give her, and I took it to their house. Now, I'm saying this out of an example. I've been for game. We've talked and seen each other years from now, so I don't want you to think anything like that. But I'm doing this as an example that's a true story to where a tie can become ungodly. And we took it over there. And when we was on our way back to the house, I said, God, I said, something is really wrong with this. But guys, out of nowhere, we was here and a vehicle came, almost tore us up. And it was by the grace of God, my husband and I still here. And I had a thought, I said, God, I hope that person did pray a prayer of witchcraft against us. And the reason why I said that is because one particular time when I was at this person's house, they was praying, her and her spouse. When they was praying, I had to stop the prayer. How you gonna stop the prayer in somebody else's house? I did, let me tell you why. God said if two or three come together in my name, I wouldn't agree with that prayer. Y'all said let's all come together. I wouldn't agree, I said, hey, wait a minute. What you praying? It was a witchcraft prayer. So that's what made me have that thought. Did they? What I'm saying, we had to go to war to break that spirit that was released over us that it did not prevail. So I'm telling you, you can have a godly soul tie with a really good friend. We just saw it in the scripture. First Samuel 18 and 1, Jonathan loved David as his own soul. They were close friends. They was glued together. But it's something God brought together. You have to watch the connections and the relationships that the enemy brings together. Ungodly soul ties is always brought together through lust, perversion, and for evil purposes. Always. The other review, we talked about Genesis 2 and 24. That a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And the two will be one flesh. That means that that man got to leave his father and mother, not saying their relationship, but he has to leave them and be cleave to his wife, be joined to his wife. That also means that you got to be glued to your wife. Right. Y'all got to be like this. Glued. And when, see, when the enemy see y'all glued together, that means y'all are one flesh, meaning one body. Mm -hmm. That means y'all supposed to be on one accord. Yes. One. One. That means God first. Your spouse, then your children. You don't let your children come in between the glue. Sure. So they already know, like for an example, in our household, we have we have a blended family. Our kids can play against one another. Y'all know what dad said. Y'all gotta do what dad said. You know they be trying to play on moms. Y'all know they don't. Y'all gotta do what dad said. And vice versa. So you cannot even allow the children to play on the oneness. That doesn't mean that all the time the husband and wife, you're gonna uh not you're gonna disagree sometimes, but you're gonna know how to come together to make a decision. Come together 
and make a decision. So they are glued as one body. So you don't let the enemy. And the last thing we wanted to talk about, just a review, is that soul ties are also formed outside of the marriage bed. And uh, because you all just came in, I want to reiterate these scriptures to you all. First Corinthians 6 and 15 that talks about that your bodies are members of Christ and show you take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot. So that means that your body, your body parts, it belongs to Jesus Christ. If you have given your body to Jesus Christ, your body does not belong to yourself. That does not mean I can do whatever I want to do with my body. My body now belongs to Jesus Christ. I cannot do what I want to do with this body. It belongs to Christ. So the scripture says, shall I take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Now we just explained, a harlot is someone who sells their body for sexual uses, not only sell. A harlot is a prostitute, not only a prostitute. A harlot is someone who yields herself to defilement for the sake of gain or for the sake of love. So even if you have sex outside of marriage and you don't do it for money, are you still a heart? That's the question. You're still a heart. The Bible says you're still a heart because you're doing it for what? What's the gain? You're doing it for what? It's the L word. Love. love. So the Bible still see us as harlots. And the reason why I say us because I did it before I got married. God saw me as a harlot. He saw me as a harlot. He saw some of you as a harlot. That you was giving up the goods to somebody that you was not married to. Even if you didn't get money back in exchange. You got an exchange of lust. You got pleasure from that. And then the Bible tells us you are taking the body of Christ and you are indulging in sexual sin outside the marriage bed. And God said it's a defilement. It's a defilement. Don't y'all know it's a scripture that talks about what it says about the marriage bed? Say it to me. The marriage bed is what? Not defiled. It's not defiled. It's honorable. It's pure. It's not defiled. But when we go outside the marriage bed, every time we go outside the marriage bed, or I did in the past, when I went outside the marriage bed, before I got married, God said it was a defilement. God looked down, harlot. And we'll fight somebody calling us a harlot. And God, but God said that's what it is. We'll fight. But God said that's why we got to be taught right. It's a harlot. That's why we got to pray for all the harlots. It's a real, it's a real talk, real generation. Just constantly repeating the cycles. And what they don't know, spirits transfer if you do that. You become one with that person. I want the young folks. I'm glad y'all came. Young people, come on up here. Uh, right here. Second row. I want my young people to see these churches. Sweet, can you put up 1 Corinthians 6 and 16? And we're going to get down to questions. I want you to see that, young man of God. What know ye not that he that is joined to a harlot is one body? And you know what heart, when, right here when it say joined to a harlot, the scripture says that word joined means you are glued to that harlot. Or you are semen. You know how the semen is out there? It's semen hard. You stuck, you stuck in place. You are stuck to that harlot. You are one body with that harlot. For two, said he, shall be one flesh. Flesh means body. 
That means when God looked down and you go outside the marriage bed, when God looked down and see you, he see one. That's why sex was always designed for marriage. Because it's so powerful. It's so powerful. You become one. You become one. Now y'all didn't hear the testimony what I just mentioned here and I want to repeat it. My husband and I met in the nightclub, right? We met in the nightclub. We wasn't saved. I wasn't looking to get saved. So we dated, I think, a year and a half. So we ended up getting married. So when we got married the first year, we ended up getting saved. I got saved first. Wasn't intending to get saved. It happened, and I thank God it did. But when I got saved, my testimony, I wasn't in and out. I wasn't in and out. When I got saved, I stayed. With the help of the Lord, I stayed with God. Process of being in that marriage, even though now we was upon the, a marriage covenant, and we was being intimate where we was not breaking God's law. Because anytime you go outside the marriage, God says, you're breaking my law. You're breaking my law. So, even though we was in the marriage, not breaking God's law, when we was in the bed, it's just me and him in the bed. But it felt like more than us. Why? Because our soul was still tied up to other people. That we slept with. So I want y'all to know the power of this. That's why too a lot of times. When people bind. And they are tied up to somebody that's not their husband and wife. And they start sleeping together. It changes that person. They started to, they started to act like that person. They started even. They get all out of character. They don't normally even argue the way they used to argue. Like, where they coming from? Why are you sounding? You sounding just like the person you slept with, the sleeping with. Because your soul is knit and tied and glued together. And that's why, again, I said, before we marry anybody, we taking them through deliverance. Because every person that person slept with, every person this person slept with, we got the y'all got to break ties because it's gonna be trouble in your house. It's gonna be trouble. If we record back today, so many marriages are not making it because of soul ties. Some of them don't know what's going on. They don't know what's calling them to commit adultery. They don't know why. As an example, baby dad went on with his life seven years ago. He can knock on the door. She'll let him back in because there's still a cement and a tie to her or a tie to him that she ain't broke yet. People say, I don't understand. He got married and went on. But he can still go back and fornicate with her. Still do it because it's spiritual. Spirits transfer. This stuff spiritual. And those spirits on assignment to destroy your life. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Our last scripture that we didn't talk about is Matthew 12 and 43. And then we're going to have questions. You need to know this because anytime people are dealing with soul ties and they want to get free, I want to make sure. Do you really want to be free? Because this scripture right here, Matthew 12 and 43. Matthew 12 and 43 says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of, I'm going to use myself, prophetess Rashida Davis. That spirit walk through dry places seeking rest. And find it done. So when an unclean spirit. Now the spirit ain't clean. It's unclean. Unclean in thought. Unclean in life. That spirit. So if I say okay God I'm ready. I'm ready to get these 
spirits about it. I'm ready to break agreement with these ungodly soul ties. Okay. When God removed those spirits out, that spirit is going to walk through dry places. What are dry places? What y'all think dry places are? And look, the spirit doing what? It's walking. The spirit is walking. What are dry places? Tell me what you think it is. Deserts. Land. Their spirit, once they come out, that's why you gotta be you gotta be for real. When those spirits come out of our bodies, they coming out of our bodies. It said those spirit is walking through dry places trying to seek rest. So they are walking through dry places, as she said, a desert. They're trying to find a waterless place. A place without war. And we tell you why they're looking for a dry place. The scripture says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. If they, if they find, wait a minute. I know she really serious about this. She trying to go back. Because when the spirit come up out of her, she's going to be asking for a refilling of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit give us power. Give, hope the Holy Spirit can destroy these unclean spirits. That's why you got to really be for real. Okay, so they are traveling through dry places. They're trying to find somewhere to rest to do their dirt. They unclean. They're going to have people do unclean business. They unclean. They, and if they find on what verse 44 says. Then he says, I, this is the unclean spirits. I will return to my house. These spirits are calling your body, our body, theirs. That spirit said, I'm going to return to my dwelling place where I've been living all these years. I will return to my house from which I came out. And when he is come, and when they come back and look, he said, if I find the house empty, if I find the house swept in garnish, verse 45 says, then go he and take with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also to this wicked generation. That's why I don't play with it. The person got to be really serious. If you really want to be free with this. Because when those spirits come out, if you're not going to go to a place to keep you from being dry, I mean, you got to get up under the presence of God. You need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. You need also to stay in the word of God. You got to stay in prayer. You got to have a relationship with the Lord because the enemy is coming back. And he's want to take back where he was living in. But if but if the house is is if he don't find the house empty and it has the Holy Spirit in there, he can't come back. He can't come back. So the house cannot be empty. So that's why it's so important that when people are really, really wanting unclean spirits to leave them, they got to be for real. Because you can be in the worst state than you was at first. At this time, any questions? Any comments? Let's do an ending prayer. Then we're going to cut this off for questions and comments. And we don't want to go over the uh, Facebook. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this word on today. And we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, to touch your God in the airways. And we ask, God, that you rebuke, God, the power of hell. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, God, that you, God, will touch your God in the name of Jesus, God. Father, that souls, oh God, will be broken from this ungodly soul tie. We thank you, God, for the word on today. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Can you cut that off, please? Oh, praise God. <laughs>